Well, I think about where we're at today and what we have is a legal ruling that says that our kids are worth the money and that the Canadian government has an obligation to their families to ensure that they have an equitable chance to raise their kids. There's still a lot more work to do there, but that's positive. The other thing we've got are First Nations agencies like Carrier Secondary Family Services who have built up this wonderful understanding of the communities, these relationships, and are in a position now to start thinking about what would child welfare look like under our own laws. So that is the dialogue today going around and the questions that they're asking are really important and those questions would not have been asked 20, 30 years ago. The bill uh, as an opportunity allegedly recognizes First Nations jurisdiction in child welfare. Um, and I say that allegedly because there is not a penny associated to it. And then the other thing too is it's kind of prescriptive about what child welfare is. And when I come to gatherings like this one, what I hear is not child welfare law. What I hear is family law or clan law. And if the government has already said, well, this is child welfare law, this is the only piece you can have, where when the ideas I'm hearing here is if you don't have a community that is feeling proud of who it is and is able to provide those kinds of basic needs for the community members to deal with things like fentanyl addiction, to deal with things of like cultural disenfranchisement because of residential schools and other things, if we don't provide that, then we're not making uh, self-determination real and we can actually limit what child welfare really looks like. We can be, put it down a colonial path instead of a real self-determination path. You know, funding enables the dream to come happen, but it doesn't, it's not enough on its own. It takes people like you and I and others in that room to really activate that for kids. It's kind of like the old adage that we all know, right? Saying you love someone without ever showing it to them doesn't really go very far, right? So what we have to do is when we get the resources, we have to show the children that we love them enough to be able to make sure what we're doing is the right thing. We're more interested in doing right than being right. Mm -hmm. And that we're gonna make mistakes together along the road, but you know what, when those happen, we're not gonna say they didn't happen or try to gloss them over. We're gonna own them because each of those mistakes is a learning opportunity, just as each success is a learning opportunity. And our collective goal will always be to be accountable to these children and the families who love them. It is uh, as hard as you think child welfare will be. You, if you actually do it, you're going to wish it was that easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I've always uh, believed is that these First Nations agencies have built up expertise. Uh, they've been around in Canada for over 50 years. Carrier Seconding has been around for 30 years. There's a lot of wisdom that's been built up for that. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Um, if we're going for self-government in a whole wide array of areas, Clearly that doesn't mean not taking advantage of and incorporating the experts we already have in our nations. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. So we need to incorporate that. But I'd really, be ca I'd really caution First Nations who are thinking about drawing down their jurisdiction in this current environment um, for two reasons. One is there's no money, uh, that you can't necessarily count on the agency money being transferred to you because the feds have limited that to provincial and federal, uh, territorial jurisdiction. And then the other thing is, is that there's lots of opportunities that are evolving through conversations like this that could make it a lot more successful and a lot more, the transition a lot easier, not only for leadership in the community, but most importantly for the children and families in the community. So that they are fully prepared for what's gonna happen and that they're full partners in support of, of where that direction is going.